Welcome to Called to Fellowship with Cynthia Kuhn. This podcast is an outreach of Called to Fellowship Ministries. We invite you to visit us online at calledtofellowship.org, where you can find additional resources and messages. Now may the Lord bless you, give you ears to hear, and cause you to experience His love as we join Cynthia in discovering the heart of God. Thank you for joining me. We have been looking at a series called Knowing God. We have seen that the heart of the Father has always been for man to know Him and to walk in intimate union and communion with Him. We saw that in the garden, Adam, when he was created, he did know God. He lived from this place of knowing God. From the moment he took his first breath, he knew God and he knew that God is love. He knew that God loved Adam. Then we saw when Adam fell that he became disconnected from God. He no longer lived out of his spirit, and God was on the outside looking in. This is why Jesus came. Jesus, all that he did in his death, burial, and resurrection was so that he could send the Holy Spirit And man could be born again in union with God, in communion with God, knowing God. John 17, I believe it's verse 3, says, This is eternal life, that we would know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. And what we've been looking at through this series is that this is not a goal that we are trying to attain to. It's not something we have to work at. That our born-again spirit does know God. The Word says in 1 John that we have an an unction, an anointing from the Holy One, and we know all things. Uh, Eternal life itself is knowing God. If you have eternal life, if you've been born again, you do know God. In your spirit, you are one spirit with him. You have the mind of Christ. Now it's a matter of living out of your spirit and retraining, reprogramming your natural mind to follow your spirit. Our our natural mind has been used to receiving all of its information through the five physical senses. But now that we're born again, hooked up with God, one spirit with him, the intention of God was that man would live as a spirit being in union with him, that all of the soul's information would be received from his spirit, and then the soul in turn would dictate to the body everything that man thought, everything he felt, everything he spoke, everything he did that the spirit man was supposed to be in dominion. We looked at how Jesus came and he took man's sin. He literally died spiritually. He bore the full curse, the full penalty for that sin, and he was raised up from the dead. He became the first man born again. He had been separated from his father. You could say that Jesus no longer knew the Father. He was separated from him. He literally died spiritually. But when the life of God came back into him, he knew God again. He knew as God knew because of the life that came back into him. Well, that same life caused you to be born again. And that same knowing came into you. In our last session, we looked at knowing God is knowing love. God is love. And we saw that with God, there are, God deals in the eternal realm. God deals in absolutes. Because of this temporal realm and man being under the dominion of time, man looks at things a lot of times in degrees. But with God, he is eternal. He does not change. He does not increase. He does not decrease. He loves 
with his whole being. In in God's eyes, you, like I said, there aren't any degrees. You are either blessed or you are cursed. You are either rich or you are poor. And this all has to do with whether or not you have accepted Jesus as your Lord. You are either alive or you are dead. And it all has to do with being in Christ. So when you were born again, the life of God came into you, absolute life, life that has no death, it has no fear, it has, it's called incorruptible seed. It is all that God is, all that God has. The word says, of his fullness we have received grace for grace. All of the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God came into your spirit, not in a measure. You became a full grown son of God. You on the inside are exactly like the Lord Jesus Christ. And in future sessions, we'll look more at how do we go about really manifesting who we are, letting what's on the inside of us out. But what I want to look at more into the love of God is that over in 1 John 4, it says that we have known and believed the love of God. This is past tense. And what the Lord put his finger on with me once was that when you heard the gospel of of your salvation, you heard that Jesus willingly took your sin, bore the penalty for it, you had a revelation of the love of God. There, There is no greater revelation of the love of God than the fact that Jesus took your sin, died in your place, bore the full curse, and rose again so that you could be born again. So your spirit man already knows and believes the love of God. That's all your spirit man knows is the love of God. The Bible says there is no fear in love. So there is no fear in your born again spirit. You are a love being. And just like God, there is no fear in you. Second Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away and all things become new and all things are of God. Everything in your spirit is of God in the full measure, full grown. You are right now complete in him. You are right now as you will always be in eternity. And because of that, God never loves you more or less. The Bible in, once again, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says, we don't know any man after the flesh. Well, God doesn't either. He's not looking at you after the flesh. He's looking at you in the spirit. And in the spirit, he sees that you have been perfected forever. And because you are one spirit with him, you are one spirit with with love. He loves you with his whole being. He sent the Holy Spirit to dwell in you because he desired to give himself to you. And knowing and believing the love of God, the approval of God, the acceptance of God should be the starting place of our Christian life. This is not something that we are working toward, we are trying to attain. That verse over in 2 Peter where it says that Jesus received glory and honor from his Father when he heard his voice saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus started, he lived from this place. He lived from the place of being loved, of being God's son, of being accepted and being approved. And this is where God wants you to live from. Because one thing about the love of God, 
you have to know that God loves you because you have to love yourself. Even the Bible says you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The truth is, most Christians don't love themselves. They don't even like themselves. And a lot of this has to do with, I think that some of the world's mentality has come into the church. You know, the the world is always trying to improve themselves. They are taking classes and they read books and, you know, to become a better mom and a better dad and a better leader. And in the Christian life, I, I think the enemy has got us on this treadmill of we always have to do something more. We are not enough. We are too much of this. We are not enough of this. We need a, to hear another sermon. We need to read another book. And we are just continually striving and striving and striving to be who we think God wants us to be. We want to be like Christ. We want the Father to, to love us. We want Him to accept us. But you are not called to be like Christ. Christianity is not about you living for God. It is about Christ living through you. Now, I want to say this. Yes, I do know that we have to, what the Bible talks about, putting on the new man. But it says this man has been created in righteousness and true holiness. God is, let me say this, God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit are 100% satisfied with the new creation. You cannot improve on the new creation. You can't add anything to him. You can't take anything away from him because the new creation has been created in Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus is perfect. Now we do have to walk in this new man. We have to let this new man out. We do have to reprogram our mind to who we really are now in the spirit. But God wants you to be satisfied with who you are. The enemy would keep us on a treadmill all of our Christian life. You you never attain. You're, You're just never there. You are basically never good enough. You're never righteous enough. You're never holy enough. You don't read the Bible enough. You, you know, you eat too much, you do this too much, to where you are never satisfied with yourself. And God wants you to know who you are, to love who you are, and to be completely satisfied with who you are. I know the Lord spoke to me one time, I was just walking upstairs in my house, and he said, you are not going to be able to walk in the fullness of joy if you are not even satisfied with who you are. And, you know, from that, I started to see something. We know that it's the will of God that we should be a very thankful people. And thanksgiving ought to be coming out of our mouth all the time for what the Lord's done for us. But one thing I noticed in my life was that at that point, I wasn't too thankful for who I was. I was always trying to change. I always wanted to be something more. I wanted to be this less. But you know, I put that word in my mouth and I just started thanking the Lord for who I was in Christ. I told him, I said, I'm everything I want to be in Christ. I am your workmanship. I'm your creation. You've created me righteous and holy. And what that did was, first of all, I started accepting myself. I started being satisfied with who I was. But I started seeing who I was in the Spirit. And that started to manifest. Because instead of looking at the outward man and everything that needed to change and everything that I wasn't doing right and that, I started to see who I was in Christ. And as I thank God for who I was in Christ, who he made me to be, that new man started coming out. 
I started to walk in it effortlessly because I was seeing this is who I am. It is the gift of God to you to be completely satisfied with who you are now in Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ right now is seated at the right hand of the Father, and I can most assure you that he is completely satisfied with who he is. Well, Ephesians says that God's quickened you, that you've been raised up and seated with him. God wants you to live a life satisfied with his love, satisfied with who he has created you to be. He wants you to live completely and totally satisfied and fulfilled in him. That's all the time we have for now. But until next time, know him and reveal him. If you've been blessed by today's message, please let us know. Go to calledtofellowship.org to share your testimony, get information about partnering with us, or contact Cynthia about speaking at your church or conference. You can also connect with us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash called to fellowship. Until next time, may you come to know the love of Christ, which passes all knowledge, and may you be filled with all the fullness of God.